Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Avila of 5 Minute Sono, and this is how you scan a small bowel obstruction. Now as far as which probe you should be using, I would start with the curvilinear probe. It's got the best combination of resolution and penetrance into the body. You can also use the phased array probe, but your images won't look as good. If the patient's skinny enough, the linear probe would work just fine. When you actually place the probe on the patient, you can put the probe wherever you want. However, I would suggest starting in the right and left lower quadrants. The reason for this is that a lot of small bowel obstructions are going to have air fluid levels, air layers anteriorly, and if you look anteriorly first, you're only going to see the air, which is going to be represented by A lines. However, if you start kind of in the right and left lower quadrants, a little more lateral, you're more likely to see the fluid in the small bowel obstruction. When evaluating a patient for small bowel obstruction, if they don't have a small bowel obstruction, often you won't see any bowel at all. You'll just be seeing the air represented by A lines. Occasionally, however, you will be able to see normal bowel in a patient without a small bowel obstruction. This is what normal small bowel looks like. You can see the feculent material inside of it really only moving in one direction. And if we actually go out and measure it, we can see that it is below our threshold of a small bowel obstruction of two and a half centimeters. Like I said earlier, you can use your linear probe if the patient's skinny enough. This is what normal bowel looks like with a linear probe. If you look at the tick marks on the side here, um, and it kind of extrapolate, you can see that the bowel is less than two and a half centimeters as well, and it's completely collapsing. This is what abnormal looks like. We can see multiple loops of dilated small bowel, and if we look up here and down here, we can see a little bit of abdominal free fluid, which indicates a poor prognosis. When we actually measure this out, it measures 3.9 centimeters, which is above our cutoff of two and a half. Sometimes you'll be unable to see the classic image of multiple loops of small bowel. Sometimes you're only gonna be able to see one loop like we see here in this picture. If we were to measure this loop out, we would see that it would be greater than two and a half centimeters. However, there's a secondary sign that we can see here, and it's the flex of feculent material that are moving back and forth. What this means is that there's an obstruction distal. The bowel is trying to push against the distal obstruction and the stool, instead of going in just in one direction forward, it's kind of going back and forth. Besides seeing peristalsis and the back and forth movement of the feculent material, you might actually see the opposite sometimes. You might see dilated small bowel that's barely moving at all. This patient here also has a small bowel obstruction. As I mentioned earlier, if you remember one number, remember two and a half centimeters. If the bowel diameter is greater than two and a half centimeters, suspect a small bowel obstruction. There are a couple of other signs that you can look for. You can look for wall thickness greater than four millimeters. You can look for decreased or absent peristalsis or back and forth stool movement, as we mentioned earlier. The Tanga sign is seen when there is free fluid around a small bowel obstruction. The free fluid often takes a triangular shape. The Tanga sign was not named after a great clinician or a prolific researcher, it was named after a type of bikini. To recap, your preferred probe for this kind of examination is going to be your curvilinear probe. You want to look in all four quadrants, but I would look in the lateral lower quadrants to start with. That would be kind of your most specific area. And the number that you want to remember is two and a half centimeters. My Twitter handle is at ultrasoundmd. You can always email me if you have any questions. There's my email there. There's a post that I wrote on Alien that kind of summarizes it a little bit differently. And then there's a great ultrasound podcast talking just about small bowel obstruction. Um, and I'd recommend looking at those two things if you want to look for further resources.